Hi, this is Erika Kassab from Small Robot Studio with a quick tutorial on Nomad Sculpt, a 3D sculpting app for tablet users. In this video, we're going to take a look into the post processing settings. This will let us enhance the results of our renders. Before anything, we have to understand this is a real time render designed for the tablet's capabilities. They are limited compared to offline render engines working on CPUs. For instance, right now we cannot render the reflection of a mesh into another one. If your render ambitions go beyond what we can do in Nomad, we recently released a video on rendering your sculpts in Blender, and we have many more on Renderman or Redshift. Hey, make sure that you are subscribed with notifications on, otherwise you might be missing out on the many tutorials that we release for free each week here on YouTube. Alright, we'll find post-processing on the icon that looks like a camera aperture. Activate it on the first option and we are ready to roll. The first option is Reflection SSR, which stands for Screen Space Reflections. This is going to give us more accurate reflections. However, the results are going to be more obvious when the materials have reflected properties. Ambient occlusion will affect the areas least exposed to the light. They will look darker as a result of it. In this example, you can mainly appreciate it inside the orbit of the eyes or any cavity not receiving light directly. The best example is when surfaces touch each other, creating occlusion shadows. The controllers will let me modify how dark they are, how large the area of occlusion is, and add or remove precision to the calculation for curved surfaces. The next one, Depth of Feel, will let me define areas of focus either close or far from the camera. Speaking of cameras, one of the new features is creating and saving different viewpoints. Inside the camera menu, on the very top, look for Add View. If you move and tap on it again, it's gonna bring you back. You can also adjust your camera and tap on the save icon to save this new view. It doesn't matter how you move your camera, any time that you tap on them is gonna bring you back to that view. Moving on to Bloom. This is a glow effect on lit areas. It creates the illusion of a very bright light overwhelming our eyes or camera. The controllers let us modify the intensity. Radius is for how widespread or how far the glow reaches. And threshold limits the glow between all the lit areas or just the brightest ones. The next one, tone mapping, lets us do basic color grading by expanding or compressing the tonal range. In other words, color corrections. We can control exposure, contrast and the saturation of colors. To work with them, I set my saturation to zero so I can focus on having a nice variety of values. This is affecting the whole image. Don't forget that you can tweak lights or the HDRI image individually. The reflectivity of the material will also play a role. Once I like it, I can bring my saturation back up. We can choose between NON or ACES as a mapping operator. In 2D software like Procreate, we can create custom operations inside the curve editor. The curve for ACES mapping looks like this, whereas none is equivalent to this. This is why in Nomad, even without moving the sliders, when you choose ACES, the darker values are closer to black, the lighter closer to white, and colors look more saturated. The starting point for making changes is different than if we choose none. Chromatic aberration is an effect created by lenses in which colors are refracted into different convergence points. The result gives us non-aligned RGB channels. If you watch Spider-Verse, you'll be familiar with this effect. Vignette simply creates a round dark frame. You can control its size and the softness of its edge. Grain is a simulation of the noise pattern that naturally occurs in analogous film. Finally, sharpness will emphasize details and enhance the edges. To finish, inside the display settings menu, we have a slider to change the render resolution. When you are happy with the results, go to the project menu, scroll down to render, and export your image. 
You can also tap on the Nomad icon on the top left and then start a turntable. The shadows in the turntable might not look as nice. Again, this is a real-time render with limitations. My tablet cannot process every frame as nicely on a moving scene. If you want a nicer looking turntable, don't forget to check out our video on Blender rendering. I'll see you soon in a new video. That's it for this tutorial. If you find it useful, make sure that you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we are bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking in the link below.